Hello, everybody. We have Stephanie McBride on right now on a travel trip, and you're in Northern California right now. Yeah, Stockton. Stockton. Yes. Yeah, we know. We know why you're in Stockton. Uh, but she's. Uh, you've been with us now for two months. Uh, uh, barely. Yes. <laughs> barely. Round. We round up two months, sir. Uh, but she has also got a background of being in insurance for some time now, and I'd love for her to kind of. I love for you guys to meet her because I've, 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 I'm, I met her in Dallas. I've seen her production. Uh, I, I've recognized her work ethic. Toby s- screams her, uh, sings her praises from the rooftops because he's so proud of her. And that's the kind of thing we're trying to cultivate and create here at FFL. So how are you doing today, Steph? I'm doing wonderful. Um, and first off, Grady, thank you so much for inviting me to be on this call. I'm really honored to be here and just share uh, my story a little bit. Um, but yeah, to give you guys a little bit of background on me, um, you know, I've, I grew up like being an athlete. Uh, when I started um, getting into the work uh, industry, I was basically in sales my whole life, but I, um, coming from um, athletics, I always really liked just the com- competition type of things. And I never really liked being told what to do. Um, I actually have a background in um, MLM network marketing. I know a lot of us come from that background as well. Um, so when I graduated college and I played volleyball overseas, came back and then I was kind of like, I, do, I, I don't want to work for anyone. I want to be an entrepreneur. I just didn't know the right vehicle. Um, I did end up working in like kind of corporate stuff for a while. Um, and the way that I fell into insurance was I actually was working for this small company in Arizona um, after I had moved out from California and uh, they didn't have any insurance. So I actually met a broker, was getting health insurance, and he I was complaining about not making enough money. And he was like, well, why don't have you ever looked into the insurance industry? Um, and I obviously never really saw myself as selling insurance, but uh, the more I learned about it, the more I could see that I could help people. I was like, oh, sure, maybe I should do this. So I got my life insurance, or sorry, my life and health insurance license. uh, End of 2019, I started in health insurance for a few months. Um, It was great during open enrollment. And then, uh, you know, urgency kind of goes away with health insurance. And uh, then COVID hit, and I ended up um, knowing some people in the life insurance industry. I got into um, uh, a life insurance company that I was with for the past year, um, my, uh, my former company, and I was a captive agent with them, um, thought it was the best thing since sliced bread on, you know, a 50% comp. And then, uh, was introduced to FFL actually from my former company, um, you know, because a lot of people were leaving and they didn't like that. And so I was hearing all these things that FFL was not the place to be. Um, I, when a lot of people that I worked really closely with ended up coming here uh, back in March, I started looking into it a lot more. I basically became obsessed with the FFL YouTube channel. So shout out to all the YouTube (laughs) podcasts that you guys do because it's phenomenal. Um, I basically recruited myself in that way because I studied you guys for three months. I was looking at all the numbers. I'm such a numbers girl. I was comparing numbers from like my company with this company. And I was like, are they really doing this well? Like, Are they really actually submitting that much? Um, are people really making that deposits? And it took me a minute to really f- figure it out. But then I saw uh, actually your call, Grady, with Toby. Um, reached out to him via Instagram and was like, you got to tell me what you're doing because I had, I could tell that he came from the same company that I was at. And I just wanted to ask question. Um, and we basically just talked through it. He told me how real it was, how um, it's a lot of hard work, but it's very, very realistic and why it was so much simpler here with the system and everything that's in place. And, uh, you know, I just finally was able to make that decision to come over. It did take me a minute. I think um, I'm very loyal. And so I think the loyalty aspect with the people I was working with uh, made it more difficult for me to initially just jump. But once I did, um, it was the best decision I've ever made. So I'm really glad to be here. I love I love it. Thank you for sharing. I, and, I, and I think that a lot of people whom are looking at a business like this have feelings like yours. And you you said, I'm loyal. These are, I mean, I'm sure they were your friends and they're still your friends, but yeah. when it's a business relationship and you're with someone and you're going to the office and you're celebrating your successes with people, it's difficult to go, I'm going to walk away from this, this group of people that I associate with to join a different group of people. But then you come and you're like, well, these guys are pretty cool too. I'm like, I think that's the underlying people think that, Hey, if I leave where I'm at, if I stop selling cars or solar or working at this job, I can't associate these people anymore. And that's not the truth. The truth is, Hey, we just, we do a lot of insurance sales over here and we're brokers versus being captive agents. And that's really where I think that there's been a, 
a surplus of people joining us, not only from the company you came from, but from companies all over the place because of just mm-hmm. the opportunity we've cultivated and created here. So, but Absolutely. you said you traveled overseas to play volleyball. Where did you go? Where did you? I did. Yeah. Um, I played collegiately at Grand Canyon University in Phoenix. Okay. And then um, I ended up uh, getting an opportunity to go overseas and I got an offer with a team in Germany. So I, I lived there for a year and played volleyball. So it's fun. Okay. So, okay. So (laughs) look for really driven people. That's so yeah. Athletes are great. Literally recruit all the athletes. So (laughs) love it. So Casey Trout went to, um, Grand Canyon is, did you know her by chance? Uh, no, I'm a little older. (laughs) Okay. Okay, Not a problem. Yeah. Well, she's, um, (laughs) went to Grand Canyon too. So all you Grand Canyon (laughs) athletes, um, we should set, we should, we should sponsor a booth at Grand Canyon college. Someone remind Absolutely. Me that, well, that we could do that in a second. Um, okay. So you're now here, you left where you were. Now you're here. Now you come out the gate swinging. What, what was your experience now working? I mean, you'd worked leads, but what's about our leads? If we could talk about leads and then your experience coming out the gates, cause now having yeah. the accessibility to go work not only in exclusively just Arizona, but to be in California and to go wherever you want to go and go protect families nationwide, it's got to be pretty, pretty fun, pretty freeing for you. Yeah, actually, it's funny, because yes, that's probably one of the things I love best about this now. But when I was transitioning, so I was fully virtual um, for the last year and a half that I was working in insurance before coming to FFL, I've never been in a home I didn't know how in-home sales worked. Um, so that actually made me kind of nervous <laughs> um, of how, kind of how to make that transition. And also when I was coming over um, and uh, Tobey was kind of, you know, I was going through training and kind of figuring out, you know, that transition, um, you know, I was a big part of the reason of why I finally decided to go is because I realized that my bank account mattered more and my family's future mattered more than my relationships that I had. And thank, thankfully I was able to keep a lot of those relationships, but at the end of the day, you really have to look at what's most important to you. And like, can you pay your bills? And I couldn't, um, I was, I had done really, really well from outside looking in, um, at my last company, but I was on this like hamster wheel and always trying to get ahead and I could never get there. And so when I looked at my bank account, I was like, I was, I was broke. I was really hurting. And so I needed to completely change my situation very, very quickly. Uh, Tobey, you know, I was in Arizona and he's like, you need to do a travel trip are you willing to like, it was literally a Thursday, I think. And he was like, can you leave on Sunday? I was like, yeah, sure. Let's do it. (laughs) So I went to Illinois. um, We got leads and with leads here um, to answer your question directly, uh, you know, it's amazing. I, I was always told, well, you have to buy leads. So you're, you're actually not losing money. It's not pure profit, blah, blah, blah. But at my, um, at, at the previous company, I, you know, the leads were free, but they, the people that I was calling thought they were getting stuff for free. And then I had to try and sell them life insurance. So there's a lot of sales going into that with our leads here. Um, what I realized people like I'm warm, they're warm calls. I'm calling people who really need our help, who really requested this, um, who have, uh, who want to protect their families. And when I call and set up an appointment with them, I, I mean, I've heard it on all the calls. You guys will say it all the time. We're basically order takers, you know, we show up, we find the need, we see what they can qualify for, and we enroll them. And it's just such a simpler process. And when I did start going in the home, um, after I got my nerves, you know, stuff out of the way, it was literally the best thing ever. Um, I love being in the home of families. I love, it creates so much more opportunity. Um, sometimes you said like, actually last night, I'm with a new agent out here in Northern California. We went to a home, um, helped a, helped a lady who had actually just signed up for life insurance the day before with a different like captive company, but it was, uh, we could get her more coverage for less money. <laughs> so we did. And um, to help her out. And then her daughter was kind of overhearing what, what her mom was doing for her. And her daughter is 26 years old, has two babies herself. And she was like, I want to do that for my kids. And so we stayed there for an extra 30 minutes and got the daughter a policy as well. And she's a lot younger, so she's able to get a lot more coverage. So um, it's just, I think being in a home with these families, it creates so much more opportunity to help more people. Um, and they really see just how genuine you are. And it's not transactional at that point. It's more compassion. How do you like being a broker and having so many options to offer? <sighs> 
It's incredible. It's honestly incredible. Uh, my first week in Illinois, I, I told Tobey, I was like half the people I protected would I would never have been able to protect before. Um, Cause we have so many different products and so many ways that we can help families. I tell everyone I'm on the, I'll be on the call with people trying to book them. And they're like, oh, well, you know I just got diagnosed with this or I just had this surgery. I, I was told I can't qualify. I was like, well, you're, you're really lucky you're actually talking to me because uh, since I work with all the state regulated programs, we're able to help 99.9% .9 of the people I sit with. So I'll be out there tomorrow. <laughs> that's, that's um, training. Yeah. I love it. So, okay. So you did a hundred, hundred percent virtual for 18 months. Was that, uh, and yeah. what, what's, so I, we don't get too deep into that, but what's interesting, we at FFL chose to do no virtual. I mean, there, there might be four out of 14,000 that do it. But the reality is persistency is low. You, people are buying 100% off of price. There's no actual um, deeper connection built that you started to realize when you go in the homes. And when us last year, we decided to stay and, you know, okay, perfect Bob and Mary, so I can either meet you on the porch, we can sit across the table from each other wearing masks, or I can verify your ID and we can do it from the driveway and I just need to, I'll be in my car. That sort of strong approach gave a lot of comfort to clients during the, during COVID. And now it's, it took us from a company. I mean, our agency alone grew five times throughout the, throughout the entire pandemic. And because clients still want to be protected, their news is telling they're going to die sadly, but you know, some people did, but a lot didn't. And, but in the same standpoint, it's driving people to want to buy life insurance. And so for us now to be a, a, a client first company, a meet in front of people first company mm -hmm has put a, a strong position for us as far as leading from the front with training from in the home. And I know that you have some things that you do that you've now developed from doing virtual, but now transitioning to home. I'd love to hear what, what are some things that you do in the home that are working well for you? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll be very frank and honest. Um, everything I do in the home, I steal from other people. <laughs> so number one, um, do what the successful people are doing and don't try and change it. Um, but when I was first going in the home, I did have to figure out how to transition that because I was so used to a script. I was so used to virtual. Um, and the first thing I did was I actually studied Eric Schmidt. Um, so shout out to Eric Schmidt. Your, his in-home, the way he sets the table is phenomenal. So when I first walk in, um, you know, I'm, I'm build very little rapport, um, you know, as we're kind of walking to the table and I set the table the exact same way he does. Um, and I, so I don't take anything out of my bag and I'm basically establishing why I'm there, figuring out, you know, what the need is. And then when I set the table, um, it's, the way that Eric Schmidt does it, it's like he battles every single objection right up front in the first like five minutes. So that way um, I'm literally getting their consent and doing a trial close before I even go into, um, you know, the rest of the appointment. I'm basically telling them how it's going to go. So that has been a game changer for me. Um, and I think one of the other uh, biggest things is once I do set the table and then I'm going into, um, you know, the uh, asking them the financial inventory and going into the app. Uh, I always pull up Americo first and foremost. That's the first thing I do is I have financial inventory out and I go into the Americo app. Um, and I'm going, I always go medical first and then financial. But with the financial thing, um, part of it is what I learned through my, throughout my first week um, being in Illinois. Some of, some of the reasons I might have lost my first few sales was because I really didn't break down their budget um, as best as I could have. So what I do is after I go through the financial inventory, I already kind of know where I'm going to go medically because I already ran the Americo uh, HIPAA form. I know what that came back as. I know like because I already know the direction we're going. I flip the paper over and I'm like, okay, you bring it like Grady, you bring in this much per month. Uh, as a household, okay, you guys pay this much in rent. Now, what are your utilities? What is your, what's your car payment? What's your car insurance payment? What's your cell phone bill? What, how much you pay in groceries every month? Uh, I literally break down. I want to know every single thing that's going out so that I can then at the end, I'm like, okay, Grady. So it looks like you have about, you know, 1200 left over every month. Does that sound about right? Perfect. Now, out of that amount, how much are you putting into savings every month? And they tell me, oh, like $400. Great. Now I just identified premium. So I, what I try to do is when I'm breaking down their budget and when I'm going through the financial inventory as I do, as I try to find out obviously what they can afford, because that's really, really important. I always tell them, 
the only policy that makes sense is the one that's actually going to be there on the day that your family needs it the most. So you have to be able to afford it every single month going forward for the long term. Um, so when I'm breaking down their budget, I'm finding out what they can afford, but then I'm also trying to identify premium through what they're saving every month, or if it's a mortgage protection lead, uh, if they're contributing any extra to their mortgage every month, um, or if they're planning to. So those are some different ways that I try to grab premium, and then I'll just reallocate that especially if they're young, healthy, whatnot. If I'm going to do a CBO, a return of premium policy, I'm going to say, hey, uh, John and Mary, it looks like you're saving $400 a month. That's just sitting there not growing for you. Let's just reallocate some of that to this policy because this is going to be an investment for you. This is basically a savings account. Your family is going to get $250,000 if you die or get critically, chronically, or terminally ill. And then when you don't die in the next 30 years, you're going to get a check for all that back. How's that sound? So that's a lot of the things I do like financially that have really helped me. I love it. How do you, um, how do you show numbers? How do I show numbers? So after I break down everything, I am, I like to really be specific on, um, that I like to know the product that I'm going for first. So I don't like to show, you know, a regular term, a CBO and a whole life. I like to really narrow it down and know, okay, I'm looking at like the CBO 100 this is what they're going to qualify for. That's what I want to get them. It's just a, are we going to do 250,000, 200,000 or 100, 150,000? So I'll, that's usually, I really like to narrow everything down for them. And then based off what their budget is and what they can afford, I I honestly, I make recommendations for them. So I write down some options. Like I write down two to three options for them and I'll show them and I explain each one. And then I recommend to them. So I'll always tell them, and I think I, I think Nina might have said this on a call sometime. I take things from everybody, but um, I always like to show them the most amount of coverage that they can qualify for, because otherwise I'm doing them a disservice. So I say, hey, John and Mary, like this is the most amount of coverage you could qualify for. So I always want to make sure I show you that. I don't necessarily recommend it based off of what we've looked at through your budget, but based off of what your needs are. If it's final expense or mortgage production, it just depends. Like I cater to them, but the, based off of X, Y, and Z, what you just told me, I believe like this is going to be, this is going to cover all of that. This is going to cover a portion of that. And this is at least going to get you started. So I kind of give them those types of options that way. And then I always tell them, I'm like, um, if they're, if, if either they pick one right away and I'm like, great, let's do it. Or if they're kind of thinking I make the decision for them. People don't like to make decisions sometimes. So I'll tell them, hey, John and Mary, I know, I know you're thinking about wanting to leave a little bit more for the family, but let's just do this. We're going to start with this one. I usually pick one of the lower ones. We're just going to start with this one. We just have to make sure you're at least going to get approved. So I, um, so I just tell them, I'm just going to, let's just start here. We're going to make sure you can get approved. I'll find out in the next couple of days. Uh, once you get approved, that premium is going to drop. You can jump up and down and, and celebrate because that's really, that's really exciting. That means you got approved for the coverage. Then from that day, we have 30 days to free. You can come be, give me a call and let me know if you want to go up or down. How's that sound? That's and then great. we just finish it. That's great. So that's, I mean, showing numbers, picking an option, help. Let, the, the next step is we need to put something in place. We got to do something. I'm, I didn't, we didn't get, mm -hmm. I've been here for 37 minutes and so we're not doing something. <laughs> right? so it's, oh yeah. We're, we're submitting an application. That's why from this. From the very fi first five minutes, I tell them everything we're going to do and we're submitting an application. I'm going to make you look the best I possibly can on paper. We're submitting an application for you to get approved. So how do you, so let's go through the whole app. We're wrapping up. You're writing notes on the pages. How do you mm -hmm. submit? Like, how do you cement, close? You're leaving the house. Any final, like, you know, things you say to completely solidify the sale? Yeah. I mean, I just let them know, um, you know, uh, it depends on obviously the product and stuff, but I, I always write everything down for them. So that's really big. I leave them with my information and I say, Hey, I'm your agent for life. Like you got, you have me for life. Um, make sure I always tell them to give my information to their beneficiaries, make sure your daughter, mom, brother, sister, whoever has my name and my phone number, because when anything does happen, Mary, I want them to call me so that I can help. I know that's a traumatic time in someone's life. They're going to be flustered and they might not be able to find the paperwork. Have them call me. That way I can help file that claim for them and get that paid out immediately. So I'm going to be here to help your family for the long term. Um, and then I always just write everything down on, like, on a note card or piece of paper of like what they got so that they have all the information. And I re and I re go over it with them to make sure they completely understand what they got. Um, and then I 
tell them that they're going to get the policy in a couple of weeks. I tell them to call me if they don't, because I'll go, I'll harass someone at the company and make sure they get their policy. <laughs> so, that. yeah. I love it. So uh, first, drop a 19 in the comments below to get show some love to step Two, what are your goals? So two tracks we have here, production, and we have a business building plan as well that people can do very well. What are, your, what are your goals? Whether it's, you know, end of year and in totality, I'd love to know what you're, what you're trying to accomplish here. Absolutely. Um, I am planning to build a massive, massive agency. Um, when I first came over to FFL, the biggest thing for me was I want to be at a place and that I want to work my butt off for the next three, four years and be at a place where then I can lead, train, manage, um, impact from, um, from a different level, be able to settle down, have a family and, and still run my business in that way. But, um, but I want that, I wanted kind of like that track and, really here is the only place I saw that that would even be possible. So my plan is to work my butt off for the next several years. Um, I want to get integrity uh, as fast as possible. Um, but I want to, but on that journey of getting to integrity, I want to help hundreds and thousands of families, what um, serving them by helping them get insurance and serving other people by showing them they can completely change their life with this opportunity. Um, so I'm really looking to grow very, very quickly. Um, and so I'm, definitely trying to, you know, pick everyone's brain and learn how I can rapidly grow at that fast rate. Uh, I will hit hall of fame. Um, if not this year, uh, next, definitely next year, but <laughs> I'm trying to get as close as possible. I can, uh, within the five months that I have while I'm here this year, but, um, yeah, so, I mean, I will absolutely be a hall of fame producer. I will be, uh, talking with integrity by 2023. I love it. Declared, the declarations are so powerful. You admit you state it becomes who you are. You think about it. You act on it. Every action you take is progressing you towards the goals at which you stated out loud to yourself. And I'll tell you and everyone listening that integrity has uh, an, in, an intent and a goal to do a billion dollars of deals with FFL agency owners. And so far they're at 10%. So love the it. exciting thing is just do your, do enact your plan work out it each and every day and you will accomplish everything you laid out for yourself. So Steph, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate you. We're excited for you. We're cheering you on. The crowd is roaring here. <laughs> thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. Good to see you soon. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.